Well, Bills Mafia, Buffalo Fanatics, <laughs> episode five. What, what do we call this episode? The frustration? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah. Episode yeah, five. Pretty much. WTF. <laughs> WTF. WTF, man. So uh, first things first, man. How you want to start it off, Rico? Go ahead. Oh, uh, how do we start it off? First of all, is it is it much to make of it of the flying overseas on a Friday? Because I'm starting to I'm starting to see more people talk about hey, the, the bills flew up on Friday. What did y'all expect? They just ran out of gas. They they, they just weren't, I mean, their the schedules weren't flipped enough to be acclimated to, you know, what I mean, the UK, UK time zone. I mean, so like when you guys are playing, when they're playing at 3, 3 p.m. They're really playing at 1 a.m. Some, something like that. Somebody says something like that. Is there much to look into that? I mean, to me, I'm not buying it. Because, and because of one player alone, and that's Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs, is just a, he's just a grinder. He just knows. Yo, know, I'm making no excuses, man. And he's like, I can't speak for anybody else. And I was reading between the lines. I can't speak for anybody else. But, yo, you got to want it. You got to show up for it. And I'm paraphrasing here. But that's exactly yeah, what he's It affects everyone differently. You know, because I mean, apparently with Josh, you know, he needs more sleep, you know, according to Diggs, you know, than me. So, but it just seems like everything was flat. And I know, you know, we're going to get into the Manalo injury, but even, even with that, it just added to the, you know, the energy of the team. Yeah, It was just flat all the way around, in my opinion. It did, man. And check, check this audio. I was, was going to try to put the audio out there just so they were talking to Diggs about, uh, Obviously, everything that was going down. Yeah, we were tired, or yeah, we were this, or yeah, we were that. But, you know, it's easy to use an excuse. I'm not a big excuse guy, so I won't say it. But, you know, you're going to have to ask the other guys, like, tired or not or whatever. You're going to get up to play a football game. You know what I'm saying you get up to do the things that you love and play this game, you know, because it's a blessing. You know, uh, also prayers for the guys we got hurt. But I, I won't never use an excuse. Uh, you can obviously look at the data or whatever, but man, I ain't I ain't really trying to hear that shit. I just you know I feel like we could play better. We we will be better, and we must. And is that simple? It's really that simple. And this that clip reminds me of when obviously when the Demar Hamlin thing went down, and everybody was like, "Yo, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do?" When the pan the camera panned to the the field, you saw Diggs getting ready. Yo. Let's go, man. There's no time to. I mean, we gotta we gotta get going. This guy, he just knows how to just lock in and get ready. It's not everybody has that that mentality on the squad. I'm not saying everybody, but it just felt that way. So when they ask you, what about the field, man? Fuck the field, man. Like, what about the turf? Did you feel about the turf? He said, yo, yo, we play this game, man. Whatever you want me to play on, I'm gonna play on. So there's London time. Yep. People make this, make the thing of it, whether it's a thing or not. Did you see? Um, actually, J. I think it was was it Jason McCordy. He actually talked about it. That he didn't care. Like you know, he he actually liked showing up late, you know, to a to a like an international game. I mean, I think that is an excuse. You know that that shouldn't be used. That's you can't use that excuse. You showed up. You were a couple of days early. They got there what Friday? Friday. Yep. They had two days. I yeah. think now the question now is is Goodell talking about, you know, them trying to see if there is an advantage of the Jaguars going over there and being over there for two weeks and to see if that was able to help them a little bit more. So, yes, I hate excuses myself. I absolutely hate it. But yeah. Jack had a major advantage. So z had a tweet about that. I was like, yo, what's, what's z talking about? And he was like, yo, great to see that they're using the Bills as a guinea pig. <laughs> yo, let's send the Bills up there. They'll be hot at this point in the season. So let's really find out if there's an advantage for the home team or advantage for the other home team that's been there two weeks. You know what I'm saying? So, and you can see it because those Jaguars started fast. They did start fast. And, uh, and that's why I'm saying it's a loss like this. Is like you, we had these questions, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to be adding more to them. So it's just like, man, why, like, why is there a London game? I know why because of the money aspect, but it's like, <laughs> you know, it's – you got to. We got we got Let's to roll. realize the league next. You know, I mean, the next game is going to be in uh, in the Dominican Republic. We're going to be playing football in Dominican Republic. We're playing in Jamaica. You know what I'm saying we're playing Japan. You know what I'm saying we're going to be make this shit global, man. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. That's wild, man. That's, ball, That's wild man. as hell. So let let's get right to this, man. Uh, I'm gonna start with Bobby first because I I need Bobby's because uh, I know he's like yo I'm on to the Giants. But your biggest frustration <laughs> in this game when it looked when you look when you took 
old way and watch this game. What was your biggest frustration? It just, just wasn't enough. Like it, it, every series, they were like just a little bit too short. And that's what it felt like, especially early in the game. But like you said, I mean, I'm on to the Giants. I don't even <laughs> want to talk about this game. And then once you get those those injuries, you know, they pile on and they just couldn't overcome that because then you see Jaguars start running the ball better. You know, then, you know, we already have injuries at the DB position. Then you see what's his name went off on Elam every single snap. I don't like the the excuse of the trap, but I think you can use the injury excuse. We just had too many guys down. Too I don't even key. know what happened. with. Yeah, too many key guys. And then even at the end, like Epinesa, where was he? Was he that tired? He was gassed, apparently, they had a, yeah. They had a defensive tackle playing defensive end at the end of the game. Vickers? <laughs> yeah, Vickers. Yo, yo, they didn't even get this guy this guy on the on the on the on the program. <laughs> You're like, who's 93? Exactly. <laughs> he wasn't even on the roster. Yeah, what about you, man? Yeah, something something must have frustrated you once or twice. Yeah, we didn't take advantage of the momentum drives. Right. And I say it, you know, all the time. It's like there are certain drives that this is the drive that we need. And it's always felt like it's like you, what Bobby was saying. It was always something. It was either a drop pass by Cook on third down or on Gabe or, you know, a penalty that brought things back. And you're like, oh my God. It's like it was always something yep. over and over and over again, man. So that's you, you that's said it when, when Gabe dropped that third. Uh, that ball on third, we were we were marching. It was, it was eleven and seven. ten, facts. Yeah, second and ten. It was late in the drive, man, and he dropped that one, bro. And if and you said something, you said if we let's just say we convert on that, the very next that drive keeps going, momentum keeps coming on our side, and we're now and it goes from being up four or being up three. I think it was it was eleven seven. Yeah, being up four or just putting on a field goal, and now we're down one. But at least momentum is on our side. But, yo, we lost the momentum. Then we're having to punt the ball back. We give it back to them. Oh, man. It was horrible. It was, yeah, it was. Uh, we had some crucial moments, man. Some holding. Some fa- Some people want to blame the refs on this. I'm not sure if I'm if I'm ready to put the put it on the refs. Because the refs are calling some, 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 that was some, some missed calls. You know what I'm saying? On the offensive side of the ball, which are on our guys. It was some missed calls like that. Head to head against Josh Allen, Josh Allen. I was like, nah, man, that's a sack, bro. How you going? Yeah. How you going? Yeah. That? That's yeah, that one, that one, I would say, no, okay, okay, you're doing too much here. You but too I will much. say this, though. It, it did feel that we had a lot of those, you know, key penalties. Like, it was the key ones, right? Because there was a point on stream, you know, where I was like, yo, I'm, I mean, did the Jags even have a penalty? And then I saw the graph, and I'm like, oh, okay, we only had two more penalties than the Jags. But it felt as if we were having all the key ones. Like, that Jordan Porter one. I mean, it was bang, bang. Bro, that it's was a like, bad call. Because Jordan Poyer, Jordan Poyer, I don't know if he got if he has the ball or not. I'm saying. His back is to me, and he's going for the ball. I got to jar that shit loose. Well, that's a momentum play because, again, yeah. it came off of a Jordan Phillips, you know, run stuff. And then a AJ Panessa, you know, bat in the end zone. I'm like, okay, we're – and then, boom, that happened. I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, yeah man, there was a whole bunch of that all game. I don't know, man. My my frustration was uh was on Ken Dorsey today, on uh, watching that game all over again. The inconsistencies, man. It's like this guy left his brain on the plane and just like put a great game plan together for the Dolphins, and you come out here and I've obviously execution is plays a big part in it, but like, fam, 29, 29 yards rushing, twenty nine yards rushing, and people want to say, but yo, the the Jaguars had almost two hundred. I get it. But guess what? The defense took the ball away twice and gave it back to the offense. And Ken Dorsey couldn't muster something and put something together. The inconsistencies of Ken Dorsey in this offense was killing me, bro. It was just, there's no rhythm. There was no nothing, man. And James Cook, non-existent. Like, you go from being, you know what I'm saying, like a key key part in this, this offense that can keep rolling, then you, you, you go non-existent. Third and two, yo, I can't get over the third and two call. Third and two first series. I can't get over it. You got Damian Harris. You got to improve the O-line. Run the fucking ball, man. We're going to throw it. Yo, I don't think anybody wants to talk about this. There were some times where Josh Allen was holding on to the football way too long. Way too long. And letting guys, and just, you had a wide open Kalil Shakir on a two-point conversion. Wide open. 
Oh, holding yeah. Up the yeah. Oh, he lofted it instead of just. Oh, my gosh. That was frustrating. Yeah. Bro. This game this game was hella frustrating, bro. I don't blame Bob. Bobby's like, yo, I'm on to the fucking Giants. I mean, that yeah, Jaguars defense is sneaky good, too. You think They're so? Sneaky good. Yeah, they, I think they have a good secondary, too. They 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 play a lot of zone though. They play a lot of zone, like nothing that we haven't faced before. Like we couldn't pick apart the zone. I just don't get it. If you have a fast defense like the Jags and they're they're dropping seven all the time, it's like dog. I mean, it's going to be hard for any quarterback to be able to, you know, decipher where the holes are going to be, especially when you're getting pressure. So I mean, it was the fact that the Jags were able to you know drop that four and or or, or pressure with four. And drop that seven and boom. That's the recipe to, you know, beat the Bills for real, for real. Yeah, I mean, on paper, it looks like Allen had a pretty decent day. He didn't look like he was bad. But, I mean, the reality is they only had seven points going into the fourth quarter. That's a problem. That's a big ball game. game. Yeah. You trailing the Jaguars the entire game? Nah, that can't happen. And and then you turn it on. (laughs) You turn it (laughs) on. I think it that's is. what it was for me, man. I wasn't a fan of the second and one, you know, pitch to cook. Oh, that one was Eagle. like, no, no, no. You can't do that one because of who we're playing. The Jags are a fast defense. And now you're allowing the DBs and the safeties to get into play now when you can easily. Yo, you know what pissed me off so many times? I'm over here watching the Eagles and they're running this, you know, brotherly shove play as if it's automatic and it is automatic you know they're doing it on 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 third and two now that's how automatic they are right yeah, on third and two do that. Like, right <laughs> and i'm like yo we have an automatic play on second and one third and one it's automatic yet it's like use that shit all the time at times he just gets too cute man too cute you nailed it too many times we were playing too cute and you saw the results. We go from having a, and this was this was what I meant by trap game, man. This was the ultimate trap game. And I called this loss weeks ago. And I, we should have won this game. Don't get me wrong. We should have won this game. But I called this loss. Going to London, big game against the damn Dolphins. And then we we, we put, what, what's with us not being able to put points on these guys, man? The last time it was really low scoring the first time, when, when we lost like 9-6 or something stupid like that. And, and then 11-7 into the fourth. And then we really kind of came on. Got no choice, but golly. Yeah. And Bobby Bobby said this earlier. He says, yo, the injuries did hurt. The injuries did hurt in, in the way that we had guys that were in that don't that don't respect the our defensive philosophy, which is discipline. And there was a lot of guys playing out of discipline. And I mean, just just out of contain. Jonathan Kingsley had contained and goes and rips inside when you got nobody on your outside. And then Travis Etienne, he would bust it up for a 15-yard run. Or sorry, it wasn't. It was. Uh, it was. Um, uh, Trevor Lawrence scrambles out. It's like, come on, man! Like we had no discipline, bro. No discipline. Yeah. I'm not even gonna get into Kyrie Elam, but we had no damn discipline, bro. It's extremely hard when you're when their number one is picking on our fourth, you know, cornerback at this time, right? It's like, you know, I don't think we put, you know, losing our top two corners. You know, we didn't put oh, enough that, stock on that. I that think was that was bigger than right. You know, even though Dane, I think they had a pretty solid game, but it was like, yo, now I'm sorry, McDermott, for even saying, why are you not playing Kair? Okay, I see it now, coach. Oh, we get I it. Because it, it was a yeah. custom. Going into the game, we didn't know that Benford would be inactive, right? No. Nope. So, I mean, we didn't really know that. And we really didn't know how bad Kair was. I just figured that out, right? He never put bad on tape. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so it's like, whoa, okay. What happened? I just don't, I don't get it, man. I and 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 you're you like you got all the physical traits. This is what kills me about this guy. We got you got all the physical traits. You're a man to man corner, and and we're in zone coverage, and you already bailing. You're bailing before, and I know this is part of the uh uh McDermott's defense where you kind of Give a little bit of cushion because we're in zone, so you can kind of bail a little bit. But he's bailing like before my man even is starting to point out. Yo, he was 20 out. yards back. I saw it a oh couple times when I was rewatching the game. I'm like, yo, what are you? He's yeah, back he to the same bullshit. Frustrating. 
Oh my gosh, man. Yo, when I made the trans, when I played, when I used to play ball and I made the transition to DB and I was like, okay, let me, you know what I'm saying? And I, I would back up. My coach kept on saying, yo, what the fuck are you backing up for? I was like, cuz I got to get back to my, I got to get to my assignment. He's like, yo, you fast enough, bro. What you, what you mean? Yo, trust you. And I'm, listen, I'm playing in when I'm like 17, 18, 19. You feel me? These guys are professionals. What you doing, fam? It's all mental at this point. It's all mental at this point, man. And and I've lost confidence. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want to say, you know, give him a chance. No, no, no. I've lost confidence. Now, now Rico, we're in trouble. Rico, listen, man. Yo. You're not locking me down. One on one, you're not locking me down. <laughs> you got yo, you got you, you get, got wheels? You're getting mossed. You got no. you, sick, you got some size on you. So the only way you mossing me is if you in the if it's if it's goal line. <laughs> you use goal line. I think it's a run. <laughs> and brother Jack comes out. Uh, yeah, you're getting mossed. I'm getting lost. Man. I would pop that shit out of way. Yo, but I want to say this though. As far as McDermott, I think he coached extremely shook yesterday, right? Because you think so? So look, it is in the first quarter. These boys just scored and put two on us. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. It was fourth and inches with 5:44 left in in the uh, in the first, and it was a momentum drive. Like these boys just scored on us, and we had a three and out the first drive. These boys just scored, and then now we're going to three and out again? Nah, coach, you can't do that right here when we have an automatic play in that QB sneak. Like, dog, just do that. But now nah, he ended up punting, and I'm like, oh, okay, he shook today. Give credit to, you know what I'm saying, to the Jaguars. They got a good coach out there, man. They got a good coach. The, Peterson can play. He's, he, he can coach, I mean. So he had these boys ready, and these boys were motivated to go up. And listen – yeah, you gotta play up. How many times when we played the, the Patriots, we we're like, "Yo, we play the Patriots, bro. Yo, they're coming to town. Yo, step your game up. Step your game up. Let's go." That's the effect that Buffalo does to now these teams that are good out there. You know what I'm saying? Or decent. Yo, we playing up. So let's go. I mean, obviously the injuries didn't didn't help. But Doug Peterson, you know what I mean, he did a good job, man. It was a good job. It was Peterson versus uh, McDermott, and he had the best of McDermott, man. Nobody had answers for Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. Off of like eight targets, had seven receptions for a buck, a buck four. I don't, know, I don't know what he did to us. A buck twenty. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah, uh, right? he had a, he had our number, bro. He had our number. And Travis Etienne, yeah, his number. I don't, I don't know how he was able to get matched up on Kier every time. I'm saying, oh, what? at some point we have to adjust, right? At some point, how was this right. happening? But everybody was getting torched. Yeah. Everybody's getting torched. Micah Hyde was getting torched. Dane Jackson was getting torched. Just Kyrie was the one that was getting it the worst. <laughs> he was getting it the worst. But that big, that was a big play. Um, we brought the blitz, and Trevor Lawrence made that just he just floated that thing uh to to Calvin Ridley over at Micah Hyde. I was like, oh, that one hurt. That one hurt. We needed to stop there. We needed to stop. But you're going up against a number one, a number one quarterback, man. Drafted number one. He knows he knows the drill. I'm I'm reading, I'm reading what people are talking about. I'm reading what people are, are putting out there uh, on, on the Twitterverse and all that stuff. And right now it's there, there's concern with Milano being out. And we are, yo, if we is it are we done? Is what they're saying. Yo, we don't have Milano, there goes our season. We don't have Trey White, there goes our season. Now we got Kyrie in the fold. Now we got Dorian Williams and we got Tyrell Dotson alongside a second year player. You know what I'm saying? In Terrell Bernard. Vaughn Miller's not, he doesn't look the same. He's still kind of amping up a little bit. Those fam, like defensively, I went, I'm going to be real. I was confident as fuck going into knowing who we have. Even when we lost Trey White, Milano, Bernard, I mean, Hyde Poyer, you know what I'm saying? Benford. I was confident. Daquan Jones was playing out of his mind. You know what I'm saying? Greg Rousseau. Yo, when all those guys were out, and then when and Bobby said it, when I saw, I was looking at the inactive, but before I go in church, I went, to, I saw the inactive. I was like, what? Christian Beverage out? I was like, uh-uh. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> 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 I don't like this. That's, that was me. I'm, I was I was leading a daughter of Kyrie, sitting in my chair. Come, whoa. <laughs> we got a problem. We have a problem, and it right. surely it did show. But the defense still showed up and gave us a chance. This is what the fucked up part is. McDermott had these boys ready to go. Still, our defense balled out, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, we yeah. gave up plays here and there, but overall, I think we balled out, man. They kept us in the game. It's our offense that couldn't get anything going. So then I'm like, so then what the hell was the problem then? Oh, we couldn't run the ball. We just couldn't run the ball. We couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't run the ball. We couldn't kill clock. 
We were, our defense was gassed. We kept on sending their asses back out there because we just couldn't get a rhythm until something clicked and then Allen started rolling. A little too late. A little too late. And man, that, that freaking onside kick was on the money. On the money. I was like, oh, shoot, we got it. I was over here like, oh, my. Yeah, man. What'd you guys say on that, Bobby? I mean, the onside kick, it didn't even look like Gabe was looking at the damn ball. What the hell was Gabe Davis doing? <sighs> Bro, Did you see that? <laughs> Oh my god. Like he was more concerned on getting hit. But right, it is yeah. interesting. I mean, just looking at the numbers, like Trevor Lawrence, he got sacked five times, which is a pretty good amount. And then Josh Allen, he had no sacks. But yet we couldn't muster any damn thing. I'm I'm telling you, this defense, McDermott's got this, it's a great system. If you play, if you do your role in this defense, it'll be good. You'll be good. I was over here streaming yesterday, man, just 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 enjoying the game. And as soon as Milano went down, I was messed up for at least about a quarter, man. At how, least. How early did it go down? It was like it was like in the second. Or like late in the first. I, I mean, I forget, but it was early in the game. I'm, and I'm sitting here. Yo, I was deflated for a minute. I couldn't yeah. get out of it. I started right? seeing Dory Williams on the field. I was like, what? What's Dory Williams on the field? Like, yeah. Cool. And then there was a commentator. <laughs> That actually said, uh, um, they asked him, <laughs> hey, you know, what's going on on the sidelines? And apparently, you know, the entire sidelines was messed up over that, that day Milano thing, too. So it's like, golly, dog. It was just a weird, ugly, just unorganized bullshit. But I'm going to say this, though, man. AJ Epa freaking Nessa. That mother, mother. <laughs> he <Dude>. came <laughs> He was he was playing hard that game, man. It it's like he knew he's like, all right, Von Miller ain't hundred percent. I ain't got no Greg Rousseau. We just lost Matt. We just lost Matt, uh, Matt Milano. We just lost him. You know what I'm saying? I'm playing with a whole a whole bunch of you know what I'm saying guys that have been fighting. I got to step up. I'm the guy that's got to step up. Here I go. This guy was batting balls down, getting sacks, creating turnovers, bro. This guy was all over the place, man. And people were talking shit about. Oh, uh, he ain't gonna be dude. He had six and a half sacks last year. A quiet I'm six. Half. Yeah, he is building enough that I could totally see them this giving this guy a second contract for sure. I, I'm it might be early, yeah. but I can definitely see a second contract going uh Epines's way if you really think about what's on this squad. God, yo, he, he was nice. Yo, he was he was playing lights out. He let he actually kept us in this game, and he's actually been. He's been balling all year. It's not like he just had one good game. So and all of played well too. So down. here's my thing though. You know, like we we bring in Puna Ford, and he's just sitting there on the inactive list. And I know he's gonna get in the game now. Yeah. But like you knew Shaq Lawson wasn't gonna be in the game. You didn't think that to, to bring him up and you know what I mean and fortify that middle of the field. Like we were good with Tim Settle. I mean, obviously you had Daquan Jones in the game too. So like you're like, you don't really need, but like I mean. Pool is gonna have to step hey, up now. Hey, it's probably that, or or he's pulling the damn, you know, Kair, where it's hey, it's just not good. You know, whatever we thought we were getting, oh. we're not getting that. And that's why we're not. I mean, we can't trust you at this point, right? But to answer your question, though, as far as you know, what's the feeling of the you know season now that we had these injuries? Yeah. Oh, it's hard not to be deflated, man. I mean, I was stuck for a minute like yo it's not like we're having injuries it's always the key injuries that kill you i mean everyone knows you can make an argument that your boy matt milano is the best player on defense now josh has to almost carry us now at this point he's got no choice he has no choice he has to he's got no choice but there, but here's hold on hold on there are no injuries on the offensive side of the ball so like we should still be able to do what we do Yes, we're going to count on him a little bit more. I just hope they don't go back to last year, Josh Allen. We have a good formula going. But, like, the defense will correct itself. Just do what you guys do on offense. Don't got to do too much. Just do what you guys do because everybody's healthy. We just didn't, we didn't have a good outing. Defense, they're going to get their shit together. Now, the real question is, does Brandon B need to start to scour around the Jeez. NFL and start kind of saying, it's it's almost like insulting to the defense somewhat. I won't say insulting. But 
you sitting there like, yo, next man up. We talk, we always talk about next man up. You know what I'm saying? Jamarcus Ingram's probably like, all right, I'm up. Let's, let's go. And B's like, yeah, I think we're gonna go luck out somewhere else because I ain't feeling that. <laughs> That's probably what the case is. <laughs> Cause he's gotta go look. I don't know if you're looking for a linebacker, maybe not. Maybe you might be chill. Maybe you might Christian Kirksey. You said you retired, bro. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> let's talk about it. Come out of retirement. You know what I'm saying? We, not, we may not even have you sit on the practice squad. Come out and play. Honestly, man, you were with us for, what, two, three weeks? That is the, I just thought of this right now. That is the phone call you make right now, Christian. Interesting. Uh, I know you in, in Cabo right now. Yo, we need you, bro. We need you. Come put the bullet, come put the red, white, and blue on. Let's roll. Come back. At least we have some good depth. Because I don't know, I don't know how much I can see of Benford and Dotson together. <laughs> Yo. I don't know if I like it to the point where there was a point I saw. I don't know if you guys saw this. There was I mean, a, made some plays though. He had a he had a pretty yeah, solid out. Don't get me wrong. Watson did not have a horrible game. He did not. Yeah, you know I'm saying, yeah. but I'm still not trying to see that that combination. Yeah, right. Hell no. Yeah, I, listen, I ain't trying to see that combination. That combination is not one I want to see. Christian Kirksey on the other hand, and 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 my man Bernard. Maybe we can see something like that. But like I, I think, okay, okay. So the only thing I would probably say to that is that. I mean, Kirksey is a middle linebacker, and Bernard's a middle linebacker, right? So, you know, with how Bernard's playing, it's like, you know, do we want to move him to outside? But you know what I mean? Or, or, or are they both able to know both? I mean, that's the question, really. Mm. Listen, let me tell you something. We have to rely on the guys that we picked up. Of course, Brandon Bean is going to knock on the doors. He's going to be looking, of course. Yep. But you pay Puna Ford. That motherfucker has to step up now. Yep. And we need him big time to step up. You drafted Dorian Williams in the third round. That motherfucker has to step up and be that dude. He has to. I, I don't trust, uh, what's his name? Terrell Bernard. No, uh, Dotson. Dotson, yeah. First man. of all, never trust a linebacker that wears number 25. That's why do you change? That's terrible. Yo, that threw that's me off. I'm like, I said, Taiwan the, the fuck? I don't play linebacker now. I didn't like that. And it, it's funny we see different things because definitely I saw um god damn it, his name keeps escaping me. Dodson. I can't even remember his name. That's that's how you know. Tyrell, Tyrell, Tyrell. I definitely, <laughs> definitely saw him make a couple good plays, but he also made a couple couple bad plays. I think yeah. um I think that that long run by ETN was because of him because he didn't fill his gap. He yeah, got washed so, out. Yeah. That one seemed I was that one. It happened so damn fast. It was yeah. so muddy in there. Like, yo, who? What just happened? You know, how, how the hell did you get out of that? Uh, it was it was. And tough. You know what? Was, I was pissed because, you know, McDermott originally brought in Dorian Williams and then they benched his ass because he missed like one tackle. It was a tough tackle. I think it was ETN like spinning. He was spinning think, out like. There's a lot of guys that would have made that he tackle, came, probably. He came, out, he, came out, he came balls to the walls, though, man. He came out with a terrible angle. I know exactly what play you're talking about. I know exactly what play you're talking about. <laughs> and then they bitched his ass. They're like, yeah, you out of here, bro. You, I you just think we need an athletic linebacker on the outside. Dotson, I, I don't think he had solid. enough athleticism. Yeah, facts. I like Dorian. He's going to be solid, man. I mean, you, you know, of course, you know, he missed a few tackles. But, I mean, he had a couple. He had one play that... Um, it was a dink and dunk. I forget who was crossing him right in front of him, and I knew for a fact he was gonna he was gonna pick up the crosser. Yet he faked it, and then he tipped that one. And I'm like, oh, that was a good play because I wasn't even expecting you to make that play. So I mean, he has the the capabilities of making you know big plays. Um, it's just I mean now it's just fucking time on task. And like Bobby says, we need you now, big fella. Like now. Yeah, we do. There's the there's yeah. Take the lumps. Take the rookie lumps. You can't keep benching his ass after one play. One or two plays. Take We're going to need him in, in January. Yeah. Take the rookie lumps. I like it, man. It, sure. it, it, that sucks, though. You got to. You got to let these guys play, man. You got to let them out. You got to love. Let them out, especially because of the, the, the injuries we're looking at left, right, center. Milano is a fucking huge loss, man. That's huge. Hey, we got to talk about this, man, because well, there's, there's, there's only... <laughs> Y'all, you might, you guys probably noticed it, 
but like nobody wants to say it. There's there's somebody on defense that just they're just a step step slow, step behind, <laughs> step a step like you know what I mean? They 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 do too much cap of stepping. Like I don't know what's going on, but they just not they're not doing it, man. That's our safety, Jordan Poirier, bro. I know people want to talk about yo, you know, it's Jordan Poirier. I get it, but Jordan Poirier, I think. I mean, obviously, we know the best days of Jordan Poirier is behind his ass, bro. This is the second week I'm talking about, like, yo, Jordan. Oh my gosh, like I think it was Christian Kirksey was on a, on a drag. I don't know if it was a drag ride, or was a, it was a corner, but like, who was trailing? Way behind, Poirier. Oh boy, it's like now we have to get situational with with Poirier. We might have to get situational. You mean in the box? Get him in the box. But like in coverage, tail wrap. <laughs> get ready. You're you're in here, boy. Get get in there and and let's go. I'm you know curious to see how this all plays out, though. I I want to pay more attention. I hope my eyes are deceiving me and I'm wrong. But it's not you looking. Know how Bill Belichick, how he was always praised for you know getting rid of players a year before, you know there. I mean, you're saying Poyer. I mean, you can make an argument for both of them. I oh, mean, really? you can make an argument really? for Hyde and Poyer. Right, because I mean, even on that one, that one long ETN run, I mean, I mean, you know, there's not many safeties that's going to catch ETN, no. but I mean, he had no chance. I so it's like, man, I mean, you can make an argument for both, man, and this is why I say this: this has to be the year because everything is going to change. At oh yeah, everything you know, this this defense is completely going to be changed. I can't see yeah. Poyer coming back. I think they they make the decision with Poyer at the end of the season, and yo. And like the the pectoral, you can come back from the pectoral. With the f- the fracture in the knee, that's pretty bad, man. That's a bad injury. That's a bad injury. I, th- I think Alex sent a tweet about it. It's a, it's it. I mean, will he recover? I'm sure he will. But it's a bad injury to go out on. That's a, pff, tough. But now I'm trying to find the good in this whole thing. And those two turnovers in red zone was huge. Those boys came through, man. They. They 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 came through defensive was the right call and you you made you made Buddy hold on to the ball a little too long and we capitalized. So you got to give this defense with all the banged up bills that we got on the squad. Uh, you know this defense still came through and they still kept us in this game, man. Yo, they called the offensive holding call on Osiris Torrance when it was a straight pancake. I was like, what are y'all? I'm like, man. And then they made the obviously they made the put the play up because obviously when Josh Allen hit Josh Allen, they made that shit up because that was some bullshit. But that was yeah beating that one. That was, it felt like a makeup. It's like man, it's I understand the bang bang plays, but it's like I mean the rest. And I hate yo, I hate even doing this, man. But it just it just felt that way. It was like every other big play, boom, it's getting brought back or boom, it's not counting. It's like yo, what the hell's going on? Like it's hard for any offense to you know, consistently hit the winning play every time. It's like, that's why that Gabe drop was so enormous because it's like, dog, we, we're not going to hit on every play, big fella. This team is over here balling. Guess which uh, which narrative is, is returning slightly, slowly. The Bills are now 0-2 in one-score games this season. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we ch- I thought we got rid of that shit. I thought we got rid of that shit. We're 0-2. And guess what? We're 0-2. Uh, when Josh Allen, when jo- actually when Josh Allen uh, throws for over forty attempts, you know what our record is? We're just above five hundred. We're twelve and eleven. Twelve and eleven when that brother throws forty times or more. Guess what our record is this year? When we score forty times, when we throw forty times or more, we're zero and two. We threw forty times in the Jets game. We threw forty times in this game, bro. That needs a little. Bit, they're, they're, that's on Dorsey. You gotta. You have more balance, man. You gotta have more balance. Find find a play or a system that works for your running game. We're better under center, yet this yeah. this motherfucker wants to stay in hot and shotgun. Like I get it, we can stay in shotgun here and there, but like we went to twelve personnel for a reason. We brought in two tight ends for a reason. <laughs> What's up with Knox, big fella? What's up with Knox, man? Again, I like Knox, but it's like I said, it's the crucial drops this guy has every. It feels like every damn game. It's the crucial one. I'm fine with a drop here and there, but the crucial ones, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It was the third one where, you know, Josh scrambled, and we needed that right there. We know this is a momentum drive, and you dropped it, big fella. It's like, dog, this is 
No, 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 no. It was the one where, where Josh he almost got sacked, and then like he kind of he eluded it. He rushed to the right and hit Knox on a rifle. Okay, so and Knox dropped it. Boom. Initially, you won't see the whole play, but initially Knox was open, but Josh decided to what he does normally: roll to the right, buy more time. So then, it still hit Knox, him though. yeah, it did still hit him though. It did still hit him, but the easier play was sooner. If he just hit him sooner, we're not even talking about this. But Josh no, held the ball too long. Facts, but again, I mean, the quarterback play is not always going to be perfect. But it, everyone knows if the ball hits your hands, you got to catch that bitch. You got to. Like even the Diggs one, even though yeah, I'm, I mean you can you can probably give it on Allen too. It could have been a better throw, 100. percent But Diggs, big fella. We need you there. I mean, yes, we can blame Allen for the underthrow, but Diggs, it hit your hand. Oh, you, you just you got to muscle that bitch. You did it against the Raiders. All right. A couple years ago. <laughs> Do it again. Again, it could have been a better throw, but we can't always ask the quarterback to make perfect throws every single time. Fuck off. At, at times, oh, no. we can't do that. It's impossible to do. That's impossible for a quarterback to hit you perfectly every single time. You're right. You're right that's, about that part. There's no way to do that. <laughs> You're right about that part. You're right about that part. I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm so glad you brought that up. And uh, I know Bobby's like, yo, what's, what's this guy up to? What's he, what's he doing? What you got to say on that, Bob? <laughs> yeah, Bobby, <laughs> jump on there because I got I got something to show y'all and I will talk about it. You know what? I'm, I'm kind of questioning is... If they're using 12 personnel too much, you know, we're in 12 personnel so much that we're not using a third or fourth wide receiver. Is that it's kind of hard to say after we just destroyed the Dolphins, you know, two weeks ago. But is that also like limiting our offense? It might kind of slow us down a little bit. And then when you do have a drop from a tight end, you're fucked. You just put yourself in a hole on a drive like we just saw. It could be, you know, taking away a lot of the bigger plays that we would use that we're not using because we're in that formation. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I, that's a pretty good point. So do you remember when when uh, this is my last point I'm gonna make on this? Do you remember that time where I just a couple years, actually a couple weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago, and I was talking about, yo, why can't Allen just just help his receivers out by letting them run underneath the football? He's always got to put it on them. Instead of letting them run underneath it. Look, you saw Christian Kirksey. Christian Kirksey. You got you saw Christian Kirk. You saw you saw freaking Calvin Ridley. They're able to kind of catch and keep going. Allen, Allen just has a has trouble doing that. How does Stefan Diggs, one of the best, a top five receiver in this game, does his job by getting wide open? Wide open. And Josh underthrows him this is the quarterback that has the biggest arm in the questionably the biggest arm in the game and you underthrow your best receiver i still can't understand it can y'all help me understand that i just can't because stefan Diggs is walking into the end zone and that changes the game that changes the game this yeah. guy underthrows a better throw a better oh. throw it he would have definitely had it oh for sure gosh. for sure yes i think i think what josh is doing now is that you know josh remember he came into the league, and he struggled with that throw. Ugh. He would overthrow that throw all day, every day. And, you know, over the years, he had to learn how to get, you know, more touch on that deep throw. And now he's like, okay, I think I kind of figured this out. Now, um, yes, it could have been a better throw, 100%. 100%. But <laughs> you can't not just say Diggs gets no blame on this one at all, though. You know what I mean? What are you blaming I mean, Diggs for? It hit his hands, big fella. That's he what I'm saying. It hit down his hands. It come down with that one. He did. No, he I'm talking about the one he did. Forty eight yards. Bullied. But he, no, no, I'm talking about that bomb the digs that got the interception. Oh, that's the that's the one on one. That's 50-50 yeah. ball. I mean, yeah, okay, that's fifty fifty ball. Which one are you talking about? I'm talking about the wide open throw to Stefan Diggs, wide open, and. He underthrows. He underthrows Stefan Diggs. Josh oh, underthrows oh, Stefan Diggs. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. You're walking you. the end zone with a better pass. No way. He he yes was no. under duress. He was under more duress when yeah. he was a rookie, Josh Allen. When he threw that to Robert Foster, and Robert Foster, I you know say funny enough, is that over the Jaguars? Over the Jaguars catches over the shoulder and gets going, bro. You got this boy rolling. 
and you underthrow him. Yo. Or sometimes Josh feels like because he was so inaccurate when he first came to the league, he was like, you know what? Instead of me trying to, you know, me bomb it, I'm gonna just put it on you. At least I'm gonna I'm fix my shit. But like, fam, we got it now. You you've shown us that you can be accurate, eighty plus percent, fam. Hit this man on stride. Hit yeah, this think, man on stride, man. I think jo- I think Josh is one of he wanted to get that completion at that point. But I f- I know, I know, yeah. I get it. I think oh. there was one thing that we. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a big deal, but I've been noticing it a lot now because of fucking Gabe's pure hand catching. I've noticed that with Diggs, he tries to make sure he catches every ball right because he always jumps and then he he does the body catch almost every time you talking about gabe or you talking about uh stefan uh, um yeah digs oh he digs okay right so if you ever see him catch the ball he always he normally jumps he j- you know what i mean whereas no, I mean, gabe is, is always a pure hands catcher right so i'm looking at at that one play you're talking about and it could just be digs is doing his thing i'm gonna jump and catch it like i normally do and then i'm gonna try to do my thing after the catch Right, because he jump catches his almost every catch, so it's like it's. I don't. I don't realize. I gotta go back and watch. But I keep in mind. That. I don't realize it, but yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you your play that you were talking about earlier, and uh, this one here. It's hard. It's hard to see a little bit. My yeah. bad. It, is that one? Where I made, it, the quick pitch to to my oh, man. Oh yeah, that was. It's like okay, big fella. I'm, I, there was no need for that one. Yo, Bobby, you still believe in James Cook? Absolutely. I mean, you you're talking about one? the. You talking about that pitch on second and one? Yes, you know exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what? They just ran into the blitz. That was like a perfect defensive play call. That was a safety that tackled him. He was he was down at the line. If anything, Allen should have saw that probably and checked out. That defense is way too fast. If you sit here and start pitching shit, you got to go off the gut with these boys. Yeah, that's hit. the only way to really get that consistent. Because yeah. Latavius and 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 uh, obviously in Harris. We're having success running the football. Yo, if you see success with these boys, yo, let them let them get the rock and just keep our momentum. And then when you we've worn we've worn them down enough, stick your boys in. But it's it's almost like we're only we're only calling the shotgun runs with Cook. And then we're giving the other backs, you know, all the other little, you know, your eye formation yeah. runs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's like, dog, we gotta scratch that play, man. No, that's what exactly what it is. Play selection. You know, they're giving Cook a lot of shitty, like. A lot of shitty little run plays that probably will get blown up. Do you know why? Because he he pre, he that's that's his forte. You know what I'm saying? If you have a back like Brees Hall that can do it all, you can do whatever you want with this guy. You're limited on what you can give. Yo, no, 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 hold on, hold on. We got to figure this shit out. How long are you gonna be using this fucking Brees Hall fucking? Because Brees Hall just had a monster game. That's why. This, that's my bitch. This Brees Hall shit gonna have to stop at some point. Brees Hall just had a monster game. Going to the Jets off of this bullshit, <laughs> right? Because this fucking Brees Hall, it can't be an every week type thing with this Yo, motherfucker. That's why. Fuck. He had a massive game. Eighteen for one sixty. He had a massive game. He balled the fuck out. I ain't gonna lie. He balled out. But yeah. it was the problem. Oh, man. Marcos, the same team that got seventy dropped on the ass. Well, you know what? Yeah. James better fucking go off then, huh? <laughs> he better go off. <laughs> His ass better go off that. I don't want your shit. Oh, what's going on with Diggs on the sideline? Was that all because he felt that he messed up, or was it all oh, Josh over here doing Josh type things? I personally think it was him that thought he messed up. I think he's like, yo, I could have did this, or why did I stop here? I should have did this. It's like, fuck. There's there was the opportunity. That that's what it looked like. Because like Josh was doing his own thing and they were, it's like they were doing a thing. He just, I guess he was looking at his own shit or looking at the play and he fucking lost it. But yo, they're trying to make something of it. Oh, there goes yo, Diggs. Said the again. optics going crazy right now, boy. Shit. That there narrative is. He's yeah. mad again. Man, knock it off. <laughs> Leave that brother alone. That's low, a good man. point. But you know what I thought was that, that he saw that he was wide open and like Josh looked Probably. a different way. That's Probably. what I thought. He was probably wide open. He probably was. I bet you when they go back and look at the film, because he said something in the presser. He goes, uh, which which gives me something to play off of what Bobby just said. Like he saw he was wide open. So he probably is gonna go back because in the presser, he's like, Yo, we saw some things we could definitely fix, and we're we'll be fine. We're definitely gonna fix it, and like we're gonna get better. We're gonna get better from this, and we saw some things, and we'll we'll fix it. So we saw some things means that bitch saw me fucking wide open on this one play and his money. 
and he missed me because he was doing some, bull, some bullshit. <laughs> so we go correct that shit. I think what's going on right now with Josh is he's trying to figure out the balance between, you know, doing this conservative bullshit and then me doing my thing. Oh, yeah. So you think he's eternally, he's internally battling with himself. Yeah, he's battling with himself. So he's trying to do the safe yeah. thing because you don't want to be known as the guy who's doing his turnovers. I mean, they crushed him week one. Like, imagine having all off season. You're doing your thing. You're fucking balling out and damn, you know, training camp. You know, you're doing your thing and then boom, you have a stinker week one. It fucks with your head. And then you have the entire damn, you know, team and media roasting your ass. So he's like, okay, all right, fine. I'm not going to do no, I'm playing it safe. And then it was working. And then he tried to do the same thing today. Yo, it's not working. Yo, it's not working. Yo, it's not working, big fella. Switch the fucking, you know what I mean? Switch it. Break the glass, bitch. Break the glass. And then boom. You know what I'm saying? Yo, your live stream must have been fucking frustrating like a motherfucker. I tell you. Because I didn't get a chance. I went dark. I didn't get a chance. I turned my shit off. I had the whole day because I was going to miss the game. So I was like, yo, let me just scrap that and let me just, let me just chill. I was like, yo, I don't want to turn that thing on because it's going, his body language is going to tell me everything. So I can't. I can't even turn it on. And I can't turn on Twitter cause, or Instagram because Bobby's shit is all over the place. I can't fucking do shit. I was like, yo, I got to turn that off. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Completely. And I bet you must have been like this the whole time. Yo, man. It, because like again, rock, it was... rock, when the rock is smelling like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were the rock the whole time, man. But negatively. <laughs> but yeah, it was frustrating, man. Because again, I don't mind losing if we showed our hand and the other team was just better. But it just felt like Every loss that we've had in the last two or three years almost, or I'll say, I'll say two years, it just felt weird, all of them. Like, I think, like, yesterday felt like week three to the Dolphins lost last year. Yep. It was like, what happened that game? It was the same type of feeling. So it was like, man, it was frustrating, frustrating. But as far as these Giants, man, I think you're right, man. I think right now this has to be a, you know, get back game. It's looking like we might be playing against Tyrod, though. And not Daniel Jones. So I mean that's gonna be interesting. You know, I mean well, they got I mean, killed. Right? Come back home. Um, yeah, man. So it's it's gonna be a it's a must win at this point. It's a yep. must win. So yeah. You damn right about that. Even even by the way, even Thurman Thomas was like, yeah, what kind of bullshit are we running out of shotgun for, man? Running out of shotgun, running out of shotgun, man. You need to stop that. You you think you're running with Thurman Thomas here? You ain't running with Thurman Thomas, you're running with this James Cook cat. That's Bobby's boy. Man, Bobby's boy better step up next game and the game after that. I'm going to tell you that right now because I'm going to get back on roasting his ass if he doesn't. I've been trying to give him some love. How are you going to blame him, though? How can you blame Cook? Ah, yeah, like, how do you blame him for getting tackled in the backfield? That's crazy. I, I mean, it's not crazy. I'll tell you why. I don't. It's, it's not crazy. Quit fucking. It's, it's not even the play selection, too. It's you know the play that's coming. Quit shuffling your fucking feet. You know what I'm saying? Make a decision to go. Oh, come on. Hey, yo, Rico, oh, yo, we thought that too, right? Go ahead, dog. There's go ahead, only dog. five carries for you to go look at. So go look at them. <laughs> There's only five of them. So go look at every one of them cats runs and look at them shuffle his feet and not know what, what he's supposed to do. I said the shuffle of the feet. Come on, baby. Man, playing fucking tap dance back there, man. Fucking pick a hole and get into that bitch. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> I have to get it. Your boy better show up, Bobby. Your boy better show up next week. I'm just saying. He better show his ass up. He will. Or damn it. Damon Harris is going to take that shit. <laughs> you imagine losing the tie rod. Oh my gosh. Oh my bro. God. <laughs> Yo, Yo you better, we might as well shut this fucking whole channel down, bro. It's a wrap. <laughs> tie rod being the bills. Oh my gosh. On a last second run, we lose contain. Uh, and the game's close enough for that bullshit to happen. All right, I can't even think about it. Nah, right. see, chill, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, what's your last words, man? Any last words on this bitch or what? Losing Milano is devastating. It really is. But, you know, guys got to step up. Hope is Daquan Jones can come back, even if it's at the end of the season. But we don't know yet. I mean, that would make the Milano loss a lot less hurtful. But, yeah, yeah guys got to step up now. They have to. A little, a little more digestible, for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. For for me in this in this man is uh obviously the Bobby, I'm gonna kind of piggyback what Bobby said. Like everybody's gotta step up. But the one the one I think the one person that's gonna really have to really show and grow up quick in this situation, 
uh, is Kyrie mm-hmm. Elman. You're going to have to grow up quick because you're going to be on the field more. So Are they going to be playing his ass, though? Yeah. So you have they to. Had Ingram out there? Shit. I mean. Listen, don't, <laughs> don't F around, man. Ingram might get his shot if uh, Kyrie is not showing any proof. But Kyrie is going to have to grow up. You have to show this team, and you got to show your teammates that you're going to grow up. This is year two now. Grow the fuck up, man. Let's go. We count now, on your Hold, on, right. hold yeah. on, man. To go off of that, I have a prediction. Oh, shit. Within the next week or two, Kyrie's gone. He's not even gonna be on the roster. No Damn, doubt. Really? I think I, I think that. last night was the le- the last chance. That's it. It's part of a trade package. You know what probably yeah, hurt him though, Bobby? Is him playing. I think they were like, dog, we weren't even trying to play his ass just to be able to have him at the highest draft stock. And now it's like, dog, yeah. you know what I mean? They lost the damn fucking cap go run. They might have to cut him. Oh, I you don't, don't think, think they, they cut, cut him? him? I don't think they cut him. I don't think they cut I him. I could see it. Uh, I mean, part of a trade package? Sure. I don't know if you could trade him. I just got to grow up. Grow up or get cut. <laughs> or grow up or get traded, bro. I got something for you. Yeah, got it. Zach Moss. 165 yards, two touchdowns. I know. <laughs> yeah. You got it or you don't, huh? If you have it or you don't. <laughs> you got it or you don't. And they said, you know, but you know what? I blame Devin Singletary for that shit. I blame Devin I, Singletary because Devin, they were trying to give Zach Moss the job. And Devin was like, fuck y'all, man. I'm not giving it to him yet. I'm not ready. And then they're both not on the squad. <laughs> and they're bringing freaking James Cook. But Zach Moss was the prototypical type of back you want for the squad that can catch out of the backfield and that can run. And he's got good size. That's the type of back you want. And now you got him and JT on one squad. That shit wouldn't be surprised me. Nah, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> they wouldn't do it. Or anyway. trade back for him? Nah, they wouldn't do it. They would never. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> they would oh, never. Oh, yo, yo. Oh, listen, it's my bad. My bad. Bye bye, bro. You ready to come back? (laughs) Folks, that's it, man. Bills drop to the damn Jaguars. Should we have lost to them? Probably not. But sometimes some of these losses are important. And uh, instead of going 17 and 0 or 18 and 0, there were two losses under the belt. We just got to keep plugging at it. So uh, we got to mature. We'll get there. We'll get healthy ish, I hope. And we got to hope that Daquan Jones. Injury is just a strain, and he's out for a few weeks and not a, a complete tear because that is a problem. On to the Giants. Yeah.